Hey chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dhera Bagga, and today I'll be showing you one of the interesting chess games that I played in the last week. I was playing here as white, and I started off with d4. Uh, open response with e6. I respond with bishop f4, trying to develop the bishop early. Uh, playing the London system here, open response with d5, and I play e3. Now, bishop was offered uh, for an exchange uh, on d6, but general idea in the London is to not exchange, but bring your bishop back on to g3, so that if your opponent takes, you can take back and open up this lovely h file for the attack in the future after knight develops and open castles. Uh, so that is the idea when you play the London system generally. And if you are already liking to understand this, uh, I would request you to subscribe to my channel and press on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I am posting up daily without a miss. Uh, let's continue with this game. Open develops knight to f6. And I went with knight f3 because knight to e5 is a controlling square in the lander. You can always remember that knight belongs on to e5 some point of time. And that's a way you can control things when you're playing the London system. Opponent develops the knight to c6 and I develop the bishop to d3. Uh, maybe ideas of castling, maybe not. Depends if my opponent takes, then I don't want to cast on the king side. Then maybe I'll develop the knight and the queen uh, on to e2 and then castle on the queen side. Here my opponent castle on the king side and I played c3 trying to have this beautiful structure in the center, the pyramid, which is uh, what you generally see in the London. Opponent plays a6 and I went with queen to c2, eyeing this wonderful diagonal towards the h7. Opponent plays h6. And allows a bishop now on to h4, which is spinning this knight temporarily. Uh, open gets back the bishop on to e7, removing the pin immediately. And I went back with the bishop on to g3, uh, hoping that my open doesn't uh, get the bishop back this time. And that's what happens. Open plays uh, knight to d7. And I went with now knight to e5, the controlling square. Open and takes, and I take back with the bishop. Opponent tries to now exchange the dark square bishop as well. And here's interest, uh, one interesting moment. I went with f4. Now, what f4 does is uh, it saves this bishop further. I, my, I will end up having double pawns if my opponent takes. But if this happens, uh, I, I would have taken from the f-pawn, opening up the edge file, which is nice. Opponent can come down here, attacking the pawn, but that can be saved easily. Not a problem. Queen is there. You can get your queen onto e2, and that's good enough. Uh, here, after I played f4, my opponent plays bishop to c6, uh, eyeing this diagonal, which was kind of weird, not doing much because you're already, uh, your pawns are in the way. Uh, and I don't see any pawn break happening, which will help this bishop I the rook side. Uh, so then I went with knight d2. Opponent still can come, but decides to go back with the knight, maybe with the idea of placing the pawn forward uh, on to f6 uh, and trying to exchange the dark square bishop because then I will have to take. Here I played uh, h3 and opponent plays f6 and I take on the bishop which opponent takes back with the pawn. Uh, having double pawns in the center is not that bad as well because helps you having a pawn break in the center which is important too. And once that happens I give a check with bishop onto h7 and then I just got my bishop back onto g6. Hitting this knight, uh, also restricting the opponent's uh, pawn movement. Even the king is kind of restricted. Uh, so that's why bishop on to g6. Uh, opponent plays e5, trying to break open the center. And I castle. Opponent blocks it now because uh, wants to disconnect my bishop and queen. Here I went with h4. Uh, and opponent plays pawn forward to f5. Uh, maybe in future opponent wants to exchange bishop for knight or bishop for bishop. So I thought of first planting my bishop there by placing h5 myself. Uh, now this is permanent. Bishop is not going anywhere. <laughs> and then after knight to c7, I get my rook onto g1, trying to maybe break open this file now next after placing g4 myself. Open goes back with the bishop onto e8, and I continue attack, I continue my attack and push g4. Open takes on the bishop. I take back, and now. Queen to f6 was kind of strange for me. I thought opponent will take here and let my rook also take back. Uh, that was the basic idea here, but opponent gets 
the queen onto f6 trying to hit the pawn and so i did thought of pushing my pawn forward now this is tricky because if you now take bad things of eight i can give a check as well uh, push you around i can take this with the rook as well and that's what actually happened in the game i think yes open took and i take back with the rook making sure the rook is uh, also saved and pawn is also defended there's nothing to be bothered about and my other rook is going to come into the picture once my knight moves my queen is also going to come here and i'm all, already controlling the f7 with my pawn so that can be a quick checkmate as well opponent gets knight to e6 i give a check opponent side steps uh, i didn't see this move and i uh, which computer suggesting knight takes on uh, uh, e4 because after i take uh, what if my opponent takes back oh that is a mate because now i'm forcing opponent to take here and after opponent takes i get my queen here and then it's a force checkmate oh that was nice i could have done that uh, some tactics losing a knight and then checkmating uh, but i thought of playing more solid here so i'll just go back in the game after uh, rook two i got my rook back because i wanted to double up the rooks here on the h file uh, open side steps with the rook now there's no immediate checkmate threat i went with knight to f1 uh, preparing my queen on to h2 uh, which was the part of my initial plan and after i saw my opponent retrieving from there i thought i'll give a check and exchange one of the rooks at least that's what happens and then i get my queen from the other side of the board attacking a pawn which opponent saves which leads to a fall of d5 and now my queen is centralized it's a good place to have your queen uh and then opponent goes back uh, trying to get this pawn uh and as here in this moment i thought uh I can attack the rook for now. Uh, open saves the rook, and that then I have nothing but only piece which is not active now is knight. How do I get this knight into action? So I first of all took some time here, and I thought knight can go to d2 and knight can go to h2. There are only two moves. If knight goes to h2, I don't have a follow-up move from there, so there's no point. If I go knight to d2, I have knight b3, and then um, or or even knight to c4. If I'm able to go to c4, I can attack the rook. And if the opponent then saves the rook, here comes the fork where I will be hitting three pieces, including the queen. That is a true thing which I'm telling. I'm not here making up stories. <laughs> I saw this coming that, okay, I can go from here, uh, making path for my knight uh, either ways. And then I can attack the rook and then I can have a fork. And that's the exact pattern what happened in the game too. I went with knight d2, open takes on the pawn, which was there hanging. I went with knight to c4 there, opponent tries to place the knight somewhere, trying to get, uh, I don't know what happening, because the knight wasn't doing much anyway. I then attacked the rook, which uh, opponent doesn't care about, and thought I'll take on the rook and he can take back uh, with the king, and simply it would be exchanged down. But here comes the folk, which I thought four moves back. <laughs> And then I took on the queen and opponent takes back and then queen comes to d5. Idea was to go from behind uh, and maybe uh, have a quick checkmate pattern from somewhere. So that's all it takes. Sometimes you spot a move, you, you find a place where you want to get your knight to uh, or your pieces to a desired place and people do fall for the trap. And it, it looked very nice because I wasn't going for a folk straight away. I was attacking a rook. When you see your rook is hanging, you don't think that, okay, opponent will leave that and do something else. You simply think that, okay, my rook is going to go and now the opponent will take and I can simply take back with the king. But that doesn't happen. So that was a nice way uh, of ending this game up. I liked it. Uh, the folk was nice, which I spotted three, four moves back. And it made me happy. So I thought I'll share it with you guys as well. I hope you liked the video. Do let me know your feedback. Keep watching and sharing. Do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already by now. And I shall see you tomorrow again with some instructive and interesting content. Thanks for your time. Take care. Bye-bye.